solved in this last village. Avalon, who is going to speak on hyperbolicity and representation of the fundamental group in the non compact case. Thank you very much. Thank you for the introduction. It's a great pleasure to be here in my to present this work and have this the presentation of the fundamental groups in the non compact case. So, as you may have noticed, uh, this is the same work that Yadek did yesterday. So I will try to do uh, additional details and uh, another uh, viewpoint on, on this work. So first of all, may, maybe uh, let me recall uh, what we are talking about. So so I will. <laughs> And then we start by recalling um, some notions of hyperbolicity in the open setting, so quasi inside. And um, as uh, Ivan explained earlier, uh, a lot of things revolve around uh, big conjectures. So, as I will state it, uh, so let X be a quasi-projective priority. Uh, over C, uh, and I say priority, but we should say that uh, I told what you could be from that or much, but I will assume that it's true. So the point should be equivalent. So first, uh, the fact that X is of uh, log general type. And second, there should exist inside Z, inside X, sorry, a uh, sub variety proper, or I will not assume that it is a reducible, so the same, a zeristic close subset. So, such that, uh, first of all, X, uh, this locus Z inside X contains, contains all of the separaties which are not of log general type. So, for any V inside X, if V is not inside Z, then V should be of the log general type, meaning that a resolution of singularities of V should admit a compact application for which the logarithmic canonical bundle is uh, V. And another property that should hold true is that uh, X should be what we, we call a picker hyperbolic modulo this uh, locus. So this is uh, the notion, uh, the notion I'm going to concentrate on in this talk. So maybe I should. Uh, So maybe I should, uh, that's why I, I gave it a proper name. So let me recall that X is a Pika hyperbolic modulo this focus Z. If for any uh, holomorphic map starting from the holomorphic uh, list to Starting from the pointed disk to uh, X and not falling inside Z, then uh, this holomorphic map should extend to uh, an arbitrary compactification of X across uh, the origin. So there exists an extension of X across the origin inside the disk to. Uh, early compactification in a high fixed uh, difference. Okay, and um, so this may be uh, an optimistic uh, way of saying uh, the conjecture. So, as I said uh, already, so this can be called uh, the green grid in conjecture, saying the open set.
Okay, so when a uh, variety is a bigger hyperbolic module, uh, not as it has several uh, strong consequences. Uh, maybe I should state several of them. So remark. Assume that X is a quasi projective variety. Uh, which is a uh, bigger hyperbolic modulo. Uh, then you can pass the following. So if I take any other quasi projective variety, Projective. Uh, and I consider a holomorphic map F from uh, Y to this uh, X. Then, actually, uh, this holomorphic map, which is a priori uh, transcendental. It will, uh, when considered between two compactification of uh, X and Y. So I take two projective compactification of X and Y. And this map a priori is defined on the open subset. It will be uh, completely uh, transcendental. But if X is a uh, bigger hyperbolic, then it's a consequence of the theorem of Su that it will be actually uh, Russian in the algebraic sense. So in particular, this is the implication that X can support only one uh, algebraic structure. If you take a binary organism between X and another as a projective variety, you will not get a different algebraic structure. Okay, um, that was the first thing I wanted to say. Uh, another consequence, which is related to uh, other curves, this is a uh, Maybe the, the starting point of all of this. Uh, okay, so if I have a bigger hyperbolic variety in the middle of the locus, then it implies that this variety will be a broadly hyperbolic modulo the same locus. So under the same hypothesis, uh, if uh, F is a non terminal curve starting from C and arriving in X, not falling inside the Z, then F has to be cut. Uh, why? Because if you have a polymorphic curve like that, which is not constant, then you can use it to hook up the map which will not extend to the origin. Simply take uh, G starting from the pointed disk arriving in X and sending T to F of the exponential of uh, one over T. Then it has an essential singularity in the origin and it will not be possible to extend it that way. So, contrary to the car had a risky property. Okay, so, yeah, we gave uh, yesterday several examples of uh, theta hyperbolic variety. So it, it, uh, it tells us that it told us that if I take x uh, equal to p1 minus three points, it will work this theorem that you get a uh, quasi productive theta hyperbolic variety. Um, in our case, maybe uh, uh, relevant. Word is a very relevant word. It's due to Borel, which tell, uh, tells us that if I take x a quotient of a bounded symmetric domain by an arithmetic group of this inside its complementary group, then we know due to uh, Bailey and Borel that uh, the quotient will be a quasi-projective variety, and actually, uh, 
it satisfies this uh, property for the lower DRT section. So if I want everything to be smooth so that I don't have any problem, uh, the this arithmetic values is a problem. Then uh, X is quasi positive energy, which is the government. Okay, and in this case, it's quite interesting because we are exactly in the setting of a representation of fundamental groups. Since uh, then, what you have is that the fundamental group of X is actually this that is gamma. And you can see the ambition of gamma inside the fundamental group omega as a representation. And this is a semi simple algebraic group, which you can consider either on R or C, depending on what you want. Uh, and it has a property that uh, you have for this uh, on the R. So here you can actually give your big representation. If I'm not mistaken, it's also a very good world where the image is very dense. And um, so we are led to the setting of uh, varieties and using representation of fundamental groups. And this gives us an example where the range you get is Peter and other thing. Okay. Um, so this is from the general setting. And now, uh, before introducing the main results, which are uh, the year for this earlier for that, and we just we get back to that in uh, a moment, but I want to give the first tool that is used to prove the data patterns. <laughs> so, namely, uh, never linear theory. Okay, so assume that you have a quasi projective uh, variety. I always say variety because uh, I misled by the French word. When I say variety, you can always assume that you can always assume that I want to say my own. So, so quasi projective. Uh, my pool. Okay. Uh, I suppose I want to prove that it is a beta public with your own. So I consider a map starting from the point in this arriving X. And what Neon uh, theory tells us is to consider several uh, functions which will be constructed to estimate the growth, the growth of this map. Uh, from this that becomes smaller and smaller around, uh, so it would be rather be atoms which get closer and closer to the origin inside the point of So, to form formulate this definition, consider uh, kind of mass. Well, actually, it's not very necessary, but it will not be a mass. Actually, consider one one point on a compactification of X. And consider the following function. So it's a function which tells which picks up a real number larger than one. And which sends it to the following value. So before um, writing it, maybe I should say that first. So what is very convenient in this theory is that when you have a pointed disk, uh, what I would do is rather consider the map starting from C minus the unit disk, and which uh, kind of inverse this map. So that I get a curve which I want to control at the end. Okay, and how is uh, my functional constructed? So I take a real number larger than one. And I integrate. So I will write it in the same step. So what I do is I consider this previous uh, t minus this uh, 
close this across the region, and I, I compute its area with respect to this form omega, which for the time being is not supposed to be colorized. And then I take a logarithmic mean, uh, and then between uh, one and the real number I was considering. Okay, and this is. Uh, And uh, what is uh, kind of important <laughs> is uh, that we have now, we're using this function, the criterion for maps to extend across the origin. So the criterion is as follows. Uh, assume now that omega is a color form on the compactification. Then, if you have so the following row, namely, if this function does not grow faster than the logarithm depending on r when r goes to infinity. Then, actually, uh, this function here has extends across the uh, region. Okay, so uh, why is that true? Actually, uh, a simple argument using Bishop's theorem uh, varies to prove that because if uh, that were not I would say that it's not hard to see that if you have this bound, actually, uh, what you can prove is that at least for uh, values of t uh, outside of exceptional sets, say, uh, these will be bound to functions. And then you, just, you can use the Bishop theorem, which tells you that uh, the, uh, the closure of the image of this set will be an IT set. A compactification of this. Okay, so this gives a criterion to obtain a bigger hyperbolic as I said, and it would be uh, the basic uh, tool that uh, would be used to prove uh, all this uh, bigger hyperbolic series. Okay, so now um, maybe let me go to the main results. So we will see what happens when we are considering representation of fundamental groups. So as Jan told us uh, yesterday, so the theorem can be stated as follows. So uh, it's uh, a version in the non-compact case of uh, what Jan uh, told us. So it's Weaker than, uh, than what we explained us. Uh, so we, we get, uh, what I say, we don't have the, the same amount of details, but in the quasi projective setting, we are able to say the following. So X quasi projective of my, my tool. And assume that you have a representation. Uh, which I will call row, starting from the file one of this math pool, arriving inside some uh, pseudo-simple algebraic linear algebraic group. That is, uh, there are students whose energy is there are students. Uh, big and uh, then so what we are saying is that we have a representation inside an algebraic group whose zero sweet closure is semi simple and uh, then to assume a uh, hypothesis which is uh, a little bit uh, uh, 
a little bit weaker than uh, what uh, Ivan explained. Then uh, we have uh, the two consequences. So X is figure hyperbolic module uh, sub of S. So maybe I should say there is this Z inside X, there is the those. And X is bigger hyperbolic module in this focus. So we, we can say that it is a quasi or pseudo bigger hyperbolic. And also for any subvariety inside X, the uh, work included in this uh, focus depends the evolved load law. Okay, so maybe uh, I should recall what is meant by big. So what is uh, the hypothesis here is that uh, X or rho satisfies a property which is a byproduct of the theory of uh, the theory of a shadow uh, mass. So a rho is big. If uh, there exists a comfortable union a comfortable family of algebraic subvarieties uh, such that so, so the proper subvarieties such that uh, for any uh, normal variety uh, if I consider and that going from T to X, not only inside any of these subvarieties, which is exactly the same thing as saying that it doesn't call in the rigor, and then the pullback of the representation has an infinite image. Okay, so it's a little bit richer than large. And uh, to, to explain the difference with uh, what you have told us, is that if you have a big representation like that in the compact case, the drop of product, yeah, then you can use uh, the theory of Schaffer-Rich morphism to get back to a uh, long uh, representation. So here we, we are in the quasi positive setting, so we don't have the theory of schaffer Morphism not only of the rational, the same theory, but in terms of rational maps. So it's uh, weaker, and we have to use this uh, comfortable union of separatives to exclude the path pathological. Okay, so now I will maybe uh, recall some things that Gar told us uh, yesterday, but I will go fast uh, about what we already told us. Just let me recall the main strategy. So it's uh, everything is related to the, the difficulty between uh, rigid and non rigid representations. And uh, this will, will also allow me to. Uh, to precise uh, a bit uh, this uh, result that uh, Yamanot already uh, remarked and uh, that uh, Ivan told us to uh, install. So, first, assume that uh, F uh, rho is uh, not rigid. Meaning that uh, if I consider its class inside the character variety of the final on the X, then it is uh, not an isolated form. It is a positive by natural component. So it belongs to a reducible component of positive dimension. Then uh, there is a so, depending on the level of details you 
we want to prove, uh, we want to add the that we need to put the different people, but maybe uh, what I will say uh, was about Ironhoid. Uh, so then it's possible to, to replace Rho. Uh, there exists a Rho prime uh, starting from X going inside uh, another very group, the same as the very group, say, or we have a finite extension of E P for any P, which will work on E P. That satisfies uh, everything I have said here. Plus is unbound. Okay, and the idea is actually uh, the very simple, but maybe not that enlightening. I'm right? not exactly sure to, to think about. Just think about it. So basically, it just uses the fact that uh, C, you can also it as the algebraic closure of QP, and then you look at Z defined over QP. And inside that component, you will have several uh, locus that you want to avoid. So first of all, there is, so let me call that Z. Uh, there is a compact subset of representations which are bounded. So let me be clearer. So I consider this component defined in QB. And I, uh, I am going to say that there is a compact subset such that outside this compact subset, all the other representations work prime inside the character of key are unbounded from the topology of the block. And okay, I like a bit, I will write that now. Sorry. Uh, for simplicity, I will assume that G is almost simple uh, as opposed to uh, semi symbols. You, can, you could even think of G simple. And in that case, there is inside this, uh, this Z a uh, proper sub variety of Zoris Kiklos subset, which contains representation which are not Zoris students in G. Okay, and here the idea is that the ones which have not the risky density, you can test the uh, not the risky density by uh, testing whether there is a least sub algebra of G, which is uh, normalized by the generators of the group. And uh, since you know that there is a representation which has the risky density in it, namely the one we started with, you know that D is a proper algebraic system. Okay, and finally, and this may be uh, uh, the fact that uh, row prime can be chosen to be big comes from the fact that inside that DC there is a union of uh, a countable union. Uh, of a proper of separatist. Uh, such that uh, it contains the uh, representations that, uh, which have a kernel inside this bound, which is larger than the generic one, the very generic one. Okay, so it's actually something which is, uh, looks like uh, non cross based groups. If you want, you have a, a sort of uh, Places where the kernel of the presentation goes up. Since you can test uh, the size of the kernel simply by looking at words in, uh, in the generators, in terms of generators of the group, which are set to, to zero 
And what you do at the end is that you take a row prime, which is not inside any of these sets, and you get your proposition. Okay, and um, now in that case, you get a uh, representation to which you can apply Gazakov's uh, word reduction. And now for this case, uh, you can uh, if people to have to several times with this, or maybe I will not just go back to this. Okay, so the case I want to, to concentrate concentrate on is the case where our growth is a rigid. Uh, then we know that uh, it is, it can be defined uh, over a uh, number of fields. So, a finite extension of Q over which uh, you, you can find matrices, matrices and inside G, more, with coefficients inside this finite extension. Okay, and we will assume uh, one one other thing more uh, is uh, that for any place of K, so that for any uh, non activated place of K, uh, your presentation role. Uh, is uh, bounded for the, the non activated norm associated to the uh, since if uh, there was at least one place where it is unbounded, then you get back to uh, this case, get a control uh, in the non compact case, and then you can use that. Uh, Yes, the, the extension to the non computer model logic is a of um, this point. Okay, so in this case, uh, what happens is that, uh, okay, there will be two things actually. So, first of all, the fact that that row is rigid. Yes. Can, can you explain why uh, this last condition can show the two of them? Uh, ah, okay. So maybe uh, it doesn't follow from uh, what I've written. You need to do uh, the, the same thing for the uh, subreddits. So, yeah, all the other subreddits. So maybe uh, the number of rows prime restricted to the time one of the subreddits. Um, I don't think so because um, it is stays portable. Uh, if you take a sub uh it defines a finitely generated subgroup of your uh, ambient uh, by one. And then for a choice of generators of the subgroup, you can use the first Yes, coming on sub So it's sub Yeah. The groups are, it's the important one. Okay, so now uh, the consequence of written DD. So maybe I should put the title. Um, okay. The fact that room is rigid. Implies that rho underlies uh, uh, CDHs. So here, the idea uh, is to, so this was already done to Carl Simpson in the compact case, but here arguments have to be replaced by the counterparts in the project that we're saying. 
So instead, it has to use the work of Mochizuki. But the idea is uh, more or less the same, uh, except that we have to be sure. So if we write things in more details, uh, so row, once you have uh, your presentation row, you can see that as your local <coughs> system. And it will give you by a Mochizuki storage tendons, uh, the same harmonical rule with a totally, uh, totally imaginary uh, eigenvalues for the rigid values of eta across the boundary, uh, around the boundary. So maybe the right hand is the same purely imaginary. Um, so I will not give too many details on the, what these objects are, uh, but you have to imagine that these uh, are the counterparts of the quasi projective setting of the thinking of those with a harmonic metric that you have to ask to uh, additional hypothesis to obtain the correspondence with, of course, with a summary simple process. And now what you do is you say that if you pick a real number and multiply uh, theta by this real number, you get a different family of the same. So these are not harmonic, but you get a different family of things for those, harmonic things for those. And for each one of these, you have a different metric that helps you. And the fact that the uh, world is rigid tells us that these things, which are still in this city, the important part is that if you multiply theta by t, you still get. Uh, the theta with the purely imaginary eigenvalues across uh, points reviews, and you have the same representation. So, play the same class for the application. And so, uh, exactly as Carlos uh, said, some remarks, uh, this implies that theta and t theta. Are uh, conjugated, they are similar values. And this implies that the, their added values are all zero. Namely, theta uh, is nilpotent. And once you, you know that, so maybe the first point. Once you know that, you are allowed to multiply theta by a unitary complex number. Okay, now lambda inside the unitary complex number inside C. Then uh, if you E lambda theta with the same uh, how many metric does uh, before? So, since you multiply, use uh, a unitary number, I think it has good that you can use the same metric uh, to get a thing to an imaginary grid. So, TTI harmonic. Um, so, if you are not really familiar with this, uh, I will. See only uh, later on the same harmonic bundles, so maybe not in the same way. This will be uh, used uh, a little bit, so maybe uh, with me for, for a moment about this object. And okay, and now what happens is that you can say the same thing, so theta and theta are conjugated, but using uh, morphism, which is an isometry for the metric H. So there exists phi isomorphism between E theta H and E lambda theta with the same metric H isomorphism, and I want to insist on that, it is also an isometric. And finally, you can do the same thing as uh, Carlos did earlier. 
this uh, using this uh, isomorphism, you can get that. We can use that to say that if it are actually uh, analyze the system of functions. So it's a very similar idea, but here uh, there is a technical it's technical difficulty due to the fact that you have to you have to, to take care of the real uh, action of theta before the action of the, the real torus that you want uh, on the same. Okay, and now we are led to uh, a variety admitting a complex variation of host structure and with uh, what I explained earlier. So we have a CDHS in this rigid setting for X. And uh, the fact that the representative, the associated representation is big. Implies that this CDHS has maximal variation. And uh, also recall that we assumed that rho was bounded for any non Archimedean place of the number field it was defined. So rho, when we write in the non white ball, rho is bounded everywhere, meaning what we just said. Meaning that for any non activated place of K, the number of fields over which row is defined, uh, this is bounded. And so, what is important here is that row is discrete and you know, it's more precise. So, row uh, actually is a, it's a factor of zero presentation, or you can, you can always say, you could, you could also say that it's, it is a variation of post structure on. Uh, the uh, integer points of the field uh, of uh, the field of a rich horizon. Sorry. Right. Okay. Uh, okay. And uh, to Finish of the tool. Okay, what I would like to say uh, in, the, in the last 15 minutes is uh, what you can say in, in the setting of the CHS and building uh, with a uh, theta hyperbolism, because if you recall, uh, that was the sum point of uh, what I want to present. Okay. So here, I will talk either of CDHS, but also of, uh, we can be a little bit more uh, long than that. So we put on my condom, I will say in a minute what it is. Okay, so uh, let me recall the setting we are, we are in. So assume that you have text which is quasi positive. And that on the text you have a CDHS or even a local like that. We are calling Zoom data, polarized CDHS. Then uh, when, what you can do with that is to cut what we call a uh, little bit function model, which actually is nothing else in that case is the associated thing model with uh, its uh, harmonic metric. And so, if you recall, uh, 
uh, the flat connection here will be nothing else that the churn connection for the metric H plus the Higgs model and its adjoint. And this is flat. Okay, and uh, if you come from a CDHS, then theta has the property that it is nilpotent, namely that if you apply it to any vector on X, you get a nilpotent from the partisan of the, the corresponding fiber of E. And I will say that E theta H, where E theta is an X bond law and H is a harmonic metric on it. So if you can, if you construct this uh, connection, you get a flat one, a flat connection. So if you have uh, such an object, we say that this is nilpotent if what I said is true. If uh, for any D under vector to X, theta applied to B, X is an impotent on the knot. So I will repeat it. If you have some object which comes from the variation of the features, then you are listening since you on the knot is a theta shifts the grading of the structure you are considering. Okay, and actually in this setting. You have uh, the following results, so it's uh, due to the other end of itself. So it, it generalizes some things which are already known from a variation of the structure. So, what we do is to remark that actually these hypotheses are enough to obtain for a strong type of obscure result. So, if uh, E theta H is a nilpotent. How many letters? An important harmonic bundle on X. Then uh, X is a trivial capital. Modulo this. So modulo the locus where theta is degenerate. Uh, well, say the kernel of theta inside the tangent space is a degenerate. It's not an, it's not a, Okay, so this is a locus which I don't think there are much more problem. Uh, so this is uh, an IPP uh, closed, but in the case where you have a not in HS, it will be uh, algebraic because of uh, results of Michael Rebar Zimmerman. Uh, you get algebraicity of this locus, and so pick up on C modulo is a risky concept. Okay, and I also want to say that for any sub variety inside X, which is not inside the same locus, then V is of log joint. Okay, and three, and I think I will end with this. What I want to the side on is that well made in this world it is an important hypothesis uh, because it allows you to see that the, the metric the natural metric you will use to uh, to prove the criterion I told you earlier in terms of Nevanina theory uh, holds. So what happens is that you let H uh, be the singular metric Baby dot H and probably boost that. Okay. 
H. So you consider the singular metric of the tangent space, tangent number of H constructed this way. So you have a map from the tangent space of X towards the endemol system of E, and then on that space you have a standard strip H star, and you pull it back and you get a single metric on the tangent space of X. So here, I assume here, by the point you have the C in the chest, theta is the the there is the, the control of the map, and it's a thing to pull back on the sort of trick of the territories. Now, it was already not remarked on the uh, CHS. So, the fact that you can compute the homomorphic sectional curvature of the H applied to one vector B. Uh, in terms of theta, and what happens is that the formula is as follows theta of v is another morphism of the fiber uh, at the given point, and so you can see that in the matrix. And you take the commutator with the adjoint for the matrix uh, H and such a form. So here, so here it was the report that this was also written. So she works at the And uh, we have uh, here what we wanted to say. Uh, So uh, now the uh, very limited lemma. If so, imagine that uh, theta of v is just a matrix. So if I take a real uh, an integer inside n, and I take a matrix inside a square matrix inside the space of matrices of a C. And then we consider for the of this edge here and function by function of the So maybe um, I have that, I fix n, sorry, I fix a function like this matrix. And then the thing is that there exists a constant depending on the on n. Such that if I compute the commutator, so I did an important matrix inside A, and then inside the of C, and then I compute exactly the same thing as above. Uh, namely, I take the adjoint of A using the function norm, and I compute that. And then the, the claim is that you have a universal constant like that, which tells this from below. So actually, you can be explicit in the value of the constant, but I don't really want to do that. I just want to say that it is quite natural that you have such a constant, because if, if it were not the case, This is simply saying that actually new potent matrices are far from a semi simple one. So, if it were not the case, using the compactness of the unipole inside the of C, you could find a new potent matrix commuting with its adjoint. Simply take inside the unipole intercepting uh, new potent matrices. The one which minimizes that. If you assume that the minimum is zero, you have that. 
And now it's an elementary exercise to show that it implies that A also has to be semi-symbol. The assumption on A is that it is important, but also non zero can be it or no. So if it is semi simple and important, it has to be zero and you get it. Okay. Um, finally, you, you get using uh, this Newton harmonic bundle a uh, metric with negative. Sort of exception of the way from zero, at least on the parts of X where this map is injected. Form of exception of curvature bounded away by uh, from zero by some constant, which is uh, just. C of the diamonds of the ring. Yeah. And uh, now it's a quite classical uh, computation, which is a uh, So now, so this has been remarked by several people now. So, but, uh, And you are going and you are going back to the model to myself. Uh, that if you can compute uh, the okay, so maybe I say it like that. Sorry, uh, I consider a map starting from the point of this arriving in some X, and you have uh, the map G. I told you about that. Which is starting from C minus the closed disk, right? In its X. Uh, and you can compute the DD bar on the norm of the unit vector for this uh, Hamilton metric you, are, you, are, you know now exists from X. And what's saying that the holomorphic sexual curvature is uh, bounded over, away from zero by a constant minus Cn uh, tells us that at least on the part where the map G is uh, immersive and the part where T bar is not degenerate, that you have such a bar. Oh, so you look at the image. Of the tangent vector of the curve inside this. And now the important thing is that uh, you have a difference if you consider this now also across the parts. Um, okay, well, that will be it. So uh, that will be class. Uh, and now the, the idea. Is that you integrate it apply the logarithmic integral on both sides to construct the fundamental function of the lambda. And now there is a classical lemma of um, the theory, which tells you that if you integrate such an operator on the left hand side with the GDC inside it, actually, you will get a function which is uh, smaller than uh, the logarithm of the, uh, maybe I should write the right hand side first. So on, at the end, you get the characteristic function of f with respect to uh, the form which is, which is induced by h.
And on the left hand side, uh, there is a classic problem of uh, analysis, which tells you that you will get something which is smaller than that. So, in, in a sense, that you can decide. And uh, I just want to introduce two new notation. So, you have a neural term. And now to conclude, what remains to be done is to uh, show that omega h here you need to show that actually the class of omega h uh, is scalar on some compactification. Because if it is scalar, the thing that we need to do is to pick another representative omega prime, say, which is actually scalar. Uh, so I said scalar, but I'm a bit uh, sloppy here, sorry. So let's say quasi scalar rather. So maybe what you want to show is that this is a big plus. So that it contains something which is uh, some of a care form, another form which represents an effective uh, device. And if you know that, you know that at least you have a representative like that, uh, which is the sum, as I said, of a care form. Plus another thing, which is eta, and which is uh, something we want to discard at the end, such that uh, eta is the class of an effective division. So the result at the end will be that if f doesn't fall inside e, then um, you get that uh, you have an equality saying that this road. So it's slower, but it's our logarithm. And uh, the other term here, if I want to be more precise, is that that there is a logarithm of form. So here I am putting different things, so different things to verify. But at the end, uh, the thing which is uh, missing to, to end the proof is to show the, the fact that the class we are constructing our function with respect to uh, is a larger in some sense than a Taylor class. And you get what you wanted to prove, namely that for some kind of form, you have such a group, at least I'm just trying to be more precise, but I should not say much about that. This is true uh, and actually outside some um, outside some finite legs of uh, such set inside. And now we conclude that uh, F exists. Okay, and so uh, how can we prove this uh, last thing? Actually, what remains to be done? Do that. One can use a criterion due to uh, Sebastian Dixon, which precisely the two uh, criteria for a class to be different. And then we have to have a representative here, which is a positive current, such that if you take its absolute uh, in the top with respect to the level measure, it has a positive effect. And here we are precisely in this setting, and we get the criterion I that class that we have. Okay, so maybe uh, here, thank you very much.